In the basic DEA model, the efficiency score, uh, for example, if you're using the input-oriented model, um, the efficiency score basically uh, represents a proportional reduction of uh, all the inputs. In the sense, all the inputs um, they have to uh, be decreased the same proportion. Now, if you're using uh, the output-oriented model, uh, the efficiency score uh, represents uh, the possible uh, proportional output increase to um, to reach the frontier. So the question is, you know, once you reach the frontier, is it possible that you know some of the individual inputs and outputs can be uh, reduced or increased in a different proportion? Uh, so uh, this concept uh, in DEA um, is uh, related to uh, the slack. So what is a slack? So let's look at this this um, example. You have uh, DMU one, two, three, four. Uh, these are uh, DMUs on the frontier. If you use the uh, input-oriented model, because this is uh, you only have two inputs, uh, the efficiency score for DMU four, three, two, one, uh, they can be uh, one. So that's why they are on the frontier. Uh, now, if you look uh, at DMU four uh, closely, you will notice that DMU four actually can. Uh, reduce um, two units of uh, this particular um, input to reach DMU3. Okay. So, although the efficiency score for DMU4 is 1, indicating that um, we cannot reduce the two inputs at the same rate for DMU4. However, we still can reduce one of the inputs by two units. Uh, so, the efficiency score again um, in this particular case uh, says the uh, that whether you can reduce the two inputs in the same proportion. For example, DMU5, yes, you can reduce them in the same proportion to DMU2. However, once DMU5 is moved to DMU2, uh, we cannot reduce any of the, uh, the two uh, inputs. So in this case, DMU5 is not efficient uh, and also uh, does not have any slacks. However, DMU4 uh, will have uh, slacks. Now, if I sort of extend it, uh, add another DMU uh, somewhere in here, um, if this DMU, the new DMU, um, is going to be projected into DMU4, then not only that DMU will have uh, uh, an efficiency score less than 1, we indicate it's not efficient, but it also will have uh, slacks. So how do we calculate um, the slacks? Uh, this is the model. If you look at this model, uh, let's look at the constraint first. Uh, if you recall, in the input-oriented model, the the constraints on the inputs here say basically says the the left-hand side um, with the lambdas in there um, is less than or equal to the, the right-hand side. So here, uh, what we do is to to introduce two sets of um, variables or decision variables. Um, one is SI minus, the other one is the SR plus. Um, the, the first set is for the inputs, the second set is for the outputs. So for the inputs, uh, you will have to add something to the left hand side so that it can be equal to the right hand side. On the output side, you will have to subtract uh, something from the left hand side so that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So this is exactly what we did here. Um, now the theta uh, was different, you have a star in there, that means this is the efficiency score that you calculated from the input-oriented model. So how do you do the select so if you use the output-oriented model first? Uh, I'm going to show you just in a couple of uh, slides. But first let's say this, this, um, is, uh, this assumes that you calculate the input-oriented model first, you have the efficiency score, so here you fix, fix the efficiency scores. So this would be the a new set of the, uh, the constraints. Um, well, the the objective function, as you can see, basically is the sum of all possible um, input slacks and output slacks. Okay. So um, th this is the, this is the model in there. So if you were to apply um, this model to the DMU four, um, uh, this uh, is the model. And when you solve that, you will get as uh, the first uh, input slack is 2, and in the second input slack and the output slack is equal to 0, with lambda 3 is equal to 1. Uh, this indicates that DMU3 um, is used as a, a benchmark. So in a sense, I actually move the DMU4 to DMU3 by reducing only one of the, uh, the two um, inputs. Now, 
if you try um, to solve uh, the the basic input oriented model for DMU4 you will get an efficiency score of 1 and you may get a lambda 4 is equal to 1 um, which is completely uh, completely correct um, uh, the lambda 4 is equal to 1 indicating that uh, the MU4 uh, is using itself as a benchmark however um, when you try to figure out uh, you know whether this DMU4 um, you know, has a slack or not, um, uh, you get the lambda 3 is equal to 1, um, indicating that um, in this case DMU3 is used as a benchmark. So as you can see, uh, this is really a, um, a two-stage um, calculation. The first stage, you um, apply um, either the input-oriented model or the output oriented model which you, you're seeing right now so this is the uh, the output oriented the uh, model the basic the uh, model there and once you calculate the the efficiency the output efficiency fee and you fix the feed in there so the constraints um, here you're gonna um, you know plus some um, input slack you know subtract some uh, output slack and the same objective uh, function in there so the first stage you calculate the basic the uh, model to get the efficiency score and in the second stage, you fix the efficiency score, and then you calculate the um, the slacks. Um, as you can see from the previous example um, in there, the lambdas will, will be uh, different. You can make uh, totally uh, different solutions on the lambdas, which is uh, um, okay. So why are we doing that? Well, um, this is what we call the the projection. So if you have a DMU that that's not efficient, okay. And this will be um, the efficiency score, uh, the input efficiency score multiplied the the current input level that tells you how uh, much input uh, should be reduced in the same proportion. And after that, you still can reduce some of the uh, uh, the inputs um, individually. And this is the projection or the target for the output orient oriented model. Um, the key thing here is the DE efficiency. Uh, there are two concept. One is called DE efficient. You will have the efficient if and only if the efficiency score is one and all the slack values are zero. Now, what if you have a situation that says efficiency score is one, but some slacks are not um, equal to zero? For example, the DMU4 in the previous example. In that case, uh, you actually have a case of uh, weakly efficient. So the difference between efficient and weakly efficient is that. Um, all the DMUs are on the frontier. Okay, the weakly efficient DMUs will have slacks. Now, um, in the DEA community or in the DEA literature, if you read some of the papers, papers sometimes people use um, efficient um, this term loosely. So sometimes when you say efficient, um, it can mean that the efficiency score is equal to one. Sometimes when you say efficient, uh, it means both efficiency score is equal to one and have some uh, zero slack values. So what's important uh, for you to know is that um, you really need to know that when you calculate a DEM model, there's actually two stages. The first stage is you calculate the efficiency score, and the second stage that you calculate the slacks. Now, sometimes people um, sort of just not do the second stage, which is okay. You know, if the it, it is the efficiency score that you're interested in, because um, once you have the theta of phi is equal to one. That indicates that that particular DMU um, is on the best practice frontier. If it, it is the only best practice frontier that you are interested in, um, you don't have to uh, calculate the slacks. But you should know that although um, some of the DMUs have efficiency scores equal to 1, uh, there is a chance that you can still reduce some of the individual inputs or and increase um, some of the individual uh, outputs there.